evening, this is Nick Meehan with JCTV's Monday News Update. In world news, American Society of Microbiology Researchers delivered a double dose of good news Sunday in the fight against flu. Successful tests of what could become the first flu medicine in a decade and the strongest evidence yet that such drugs save lives, not just shorten the illness. A large study in Asia found that a single dose of the experimental drug Paramivir cleared up flu symptoms along with five days of Tamiflu pills. An IV treatment is badly needed because many sick people can't swallow pills and because illness hinders the body's ability to absorb oral medicines. Several other studies showed the value of treatment with Tamiflu. In one study of hundreds of people stricken with bird flu around the world, half of those given Tamiflu survived while nearly 90% of those not given flu medicines died. Other research showed Tamiflu improves survival from regular seasonal flu too. In local news, even with fall on the way, the cleanup continues from spring flooding. The Army Corps of Engineers is finishing work in Sawyer to remove clay that was added to the top of a levee during the spring flood battle. In Barnes County, crews are removing a temporary levee Corps Specialist Herschel Veitch said about 2,000 cubic yards of clay has to be removed in Sawyer before topsoil can be placed on the levee. He says then that the community can put down grass. In Barnes County, the work involves the Woodland Park levee. The Corps says emergency levees in Valley City will also be removed, but under another contract. The work in Sawyer and Barnes County is expected to be finished by the middle of the week. An unattended candle was the cause of a house fire that burned a bedroom on Jamestown's 8th Street. The Jamestown Fire Department responded to the call at about 3.50 p.m. and was on the scene for about two hours. The people who were in the house got out safely and no injuries were reported. Fire Chief Jim Ruther said one bedroom was completely burned and the basement and half the upstairs sustained smoke damage. He estimated the amount of damage between 10,000 and 15,000. Well, in weather, this beautiful sunshine seems to want to stick around this week with highs in the upper 70s and cresting at 82 on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday, expect isolated thunderstorms. In sports, the Jimmy football team hosted its home opener against Division III opponent Wisconsin Stout. The two teams played for the first time last year, and the Stout Blue Devils won 37-13. It looks like the Blue Devils would have their way with the Jimmys again, when Ross Carey hit Antoine Walker for a 59-yard touchdown in the team's opening drive. The Jimmy offense was slow to start until Mike Bueller threw a shovel pass to Lance Johansson, who scampered 49 yards to tie the game at seven points apiece. The Jimmy defense forced three turnovers in the game and gave the offense a chance to take a 14-7 lead in the second quarter when Max Bowe caught a 24-yard pass in the back of the end zone. After a scoreless third quarter, the Blue Devils scored 17 points in the fourth quarter, including a Kyle Martin 42-yard field goal that bounced off the top of the upright. The Blue Devils' defense forced five turnovers, including the last Jimmy possession when Bueller forced a pass to Josh Ewells. The Jimmys lost 14-24. The Jimmy volleyball team dropped three of four games this weekend at the Graceland Volleyball Tournament in Lamoni, Iowa. However, each of those losses were against top 25 teams. On Friday, the Jimmys defeated Mount Mercury three sets to one and lost to Lindenwood in three straight sets. On Saturday, the ladies dropped both matches to number four ranked Columbia and number 19 ranked Taylor. On a positive note, Allie Edwards and Sam Revering both represented the Jimmys by making the all-tournament team. The Jimmys began conference play against Mayville on Friday at 7 p.m. in the Hanson. See you there. The women's soccer team played to a heartbreaking tie yesterday against the University of Minnesota State Moorhead. The Jimmys trailed by two for most of the game, but battled back late to tie the match. In overtime, the Jimmys couldn't capitalize on an open goal opportunity and ended up settling for the tie. Their next game is Friday in Great Falls, Montana. The men's soccer team won their first game this year at Presentation College in Moorhead, Minnesota yesterday with a score of 3-1. They also play their next game Friday at Great Falls. The Jimmy women's cross country season started Friday at Bemidji, Minnesota. Katie Conlon, Alyssa Bossler, Emmy Bentley, Cambria Belter, and Madley Hornug 
finished in the top 15 to give the team a second place finish behind the University of Mary. The men's cross country team was led by JJ Korber and Kelly Rummick, who placed in the top 20. The next cross country meet is September 26th in Minneapolis. On the link, it's a big week for the Jimmy Golf teams. They swing it at Valley City State Invitational today and Thursday at the University of Minnesota Morris Invite. We'll have updated stats on how they turn out this weekend tomorrow. Well, I'm Nick Meehan with JCTV, connecting the campus with the community.